All right. Jerry, they're all yours. Okay. So we're going to run through the um, slides first. The first group. Okay. Yes. All right. So what we're doing is, is in the very beginning, these are, um, I'm sharing with you uh, some images to give you a sense of the, um, the scope or the, um, uh, the breadth of my work. You, you'll see that there's a lot of different things going on. So we'll stop there and then we'll, we'll uh, and then I'll, I just want to sort of talk to you about uh, some things that are important to me and what I want to share with you today. And that is, um, so I made some notes, you know, I made some notes and um, I was thinking about um, after a presentation, I mean, what, what do you want to impart uh, to uh, the, the, the students? And um, so uh, here's a couple of things that I want you, and I think you might, you know, get a sense of this as I, I go forward on the presentation, but there are four things that are sort of takeaways. Now, um, I want you to sort of tuck them back in your head, your mind there. And because I think you can use them for all kinds of things. But this is about this is about Jerry Pinkney, all right? So it's um, one. I love what I do, and and I, and I, and I, in many ways, I, I hope that it'll come across, and how I, I talk about the work that I do. Uh, number two, um, and this is, not, they're probably all important, but this is especially important for you guys. I work very hard. And um, now, if you think back on number one, I love what I do. Um, and then number two, I work very hard. You can see if you love what you do, then you can you will work hard. Because you don't really kind of see it as work. It's 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 something that you that's necessary to to, to and and it helps you enjoy your work. You know, because preparation is all that kind of stuff, research. Um, number three, the work can be rewarding. And I'm going to talk about that later at the end uh, and, and, and the way the reward comes back to me in terms of experiences um, and the people I've met along the way in doing what I do, which is make images, pictures. And... Um, when I was growing up, uh, my father, my, my mother was great. She really supported uh, me and, and the fact that, that I loved drawing. And, um, and then also she was there supporting me when I went on to art school. My dad, when I was very young, wasn't so sure, but he, he, didn't, he didn't know. So he made sure when I was very young that I had materials to work with. And at one point he got me into, I guess, sort of a, a, a um, after school workshop in, in an artist studio. Um, but when I came to, you know, making a living, um, he wasn't so sure, but he didn't know. So uh, he was not terribly excited about his son choosing art to go to art school. So number four, you can make a living. Um, this is what I do. The fact that I love it. I'm also able to provide for my family. Um, and I think that's important that my parents didn't know that. And the arts, sometimes uh, parents may be in and may not know and because they care and, and they, they, they're concerned about how you're going to do as an adult, may not understand fully that how important the arts are you know are to us all but, but as a form of, of work so um those are the two these are the things that are kind of takeaways um i'm going to ask you about that in, in the end so don't know <laughs> uh, tuck them away uh, i grew up in uh, philadelphia big city a uh, small section called Germantown um, uh, section of, of Philadelphia. And um, um, when I was your age, though, I didn't have a, um, 
an artist or an author come to visit me in school, I knew that I loved drawing, but I didn't know the potential that was there uh, in, in what I loved to do and was gifted to do, as a matter of fact. Um, so I didn't know about that. I did know and understood that that um, drawing was comfortable. It made me feel it's like a safety net for me when I was a kid. Now, first grade, second grade, third grade, I was fine. And then there was a, a point in school where I was having difficulty. Now, um, years later, I, I, I found out and discovered uh, that I'm dyslexic, so I have a learning disability or a learning difference. But I didn't, when I was growing up, um, there was no such word as um, dyslexia. I mean, so so there were no strategies or remedies for a kid like myself. Um, and I didn't want to be known as a person who couldn't read well. So I kind of hid that. Um, but however, I did want to participate in the classroom. Um, and so I sort of married the two. I took the, the fact that I loved drawing and it was a gift and skill there. And I would apply that to classroom work when I could and when the teacher would allow uh, as a way of being a part of the classroom and, and, and a contribution to the, the classroom. Also, um, I, really, I really wanted to learn. I was just having difficulties in learning. Um, and so that's what I did. So um, I, when working on a project, always found a way that I could visualize something. I could make something, whether it was a cover for a report or something like that. It was always, that was always there. And again, I had great teachers that allowed me and understood the fact that um, uh, I wanted to contribute. I wanted to do well. Uh, allowed me that, and that was that was in a sense um, the first the one of the encouragements. My parents were great, um, but but my teachers were instrumental because of the fact that I had to sort of live up to something within the classroom, and I wanted to do that. So I did very well, and I and I said this um, I say this over and over again, especially when I'm speaking to students um, with uh, difficulty. Over, a poor student. I was always a good student. And um, I actually graduated um, uh, with honors um, from Hill, Hill Elementary School. And um, um, now, up until that time, I kind of understood the love of drawing. I didn't understand what I could do with that, that passion or that love. So when I was 13 years old, we came from a family. There were eight of us, uh, six children, mom and dad. And um, there wasn't always um, a lot of money around. So as, as kids, what we did was in order to get our own sort of spending money, we would actually take on jobs. And by the way, when back in the day, when I was a kid growing up, when you took a job, you gave whatever you made in terms of a salary. You gave half to the household. And that's it. My first job was selling newspapers at a very busy intersection in Germantown. And I made $6 a week. And I gave my mother three. The other three I used, I spent on candy. <laughs> but I did. I, I bought some sketch pads in there as well. But um, anyway, I loved drawing, and I, you could always find me with a drawing pad and some pencils in, in hand. And um, so at 13, I, um, I, um, I took a job selling newspapers at a newspaper stand. And, um, and I would always take a drawing pad and, and pencils to, uh, with me. Now, I worked very hard. Uh, and you're going to see this. Um, coming up over and over again, you're going to hear me talk about working very hard. Um, and so I was, I was, I was pretty good at selling newspapers. I would, what you call hawking newspapers. Hey, get your newspaper here. 
and then I would read the headlines or something like that. But when my corner um, wasn't always as busy, there were actually three other uh, newsstands, and, and one, uh, two were very large, were owned by my boss, and they sold they sold not only newspapers but uh, magazines and even snacks. Um, and um, so my that there were times when I didn't uh, my corner was in terribly terribly busy, and I would take out my sketch pad and I would draw. I would draw, and I when I first started drawing, uh, it was um, mainly kind of um, I it was mainly kind of things that had wheels. Um, you know, we had sort of gone through World War II, so there was lots of things about model airplanes. I loved model airplanes. I used to put them together and also um, draw them. Um, but and but uh, the other side of the things I like I drew was. People, but people, you know, like and and family members. There was whatever was in front of me. I just like the idea of you guys have anything that you just love to do that you just can't wait to get to. Um, and um, well, that was drawing for me. So um, so uh, when I was on the newsstand, um, and I would draw people waiting for the bus or the trolley. Um, I would, um, you know, they had this Rowles was a big department store with these showcase windows. And when I would, when they would change the window displays, I would do new drawings, just constantly drawing. Um, and it turns out that one of my customers who bought a paper from me every once in a while, his name was John Liney. He was a cartoonist of, of Little Henry. Uh, it was a, um, uh, a syndicated comic strip in a newspaper. So, um, so one day he was, you know, he was about to buy a, a newspaper from me, and he noticed that I had my drawing pad nearby, and he asked if I would share my sketches with him. Now I didn't know he was an artist at the time, so he, um, I said yes, and he looked at them, and then he said, "My studio." It's right up the street. Would you like to come by and visit at some point? And I said, yes, of course. So here's my question to you guys. Would you like to visit my studio this morning? You Give would. A thumbs up if you'd like to check it out. <laughs> OK. So um, my, um, what I, this is cool. This has worked before. Um, my um, computer. Is on a music stand, so I'm going to give you a tour, like John Liney sort of gave me a tour. And um, so I'm going to start with just moving out of the picture and and going to my drawing table. Um, now, what you see here, these are marker drawings. Um, I, at one point I used to work in pencil to do these drawings, uh, but these are marker drawings and these are idea concept drawings. This gives you a sense of, um, gives me possibilities. Um, now for research, research is incredibly important in my work. So I have all kinds of research books and I'll share you with my, my library. But this is a book that, um, it's just so faces. And so, in order to create a, sort of an expression or an age level for a face, um, and even a nationality or race of, of, of someone, I go to these books. So I have, you'll see, oh, when, when, I, when, you, when I start rotating around the studio, how many books um, that are necessary for me to do what I do. OK, so this is my drawing board. And I, often, I also use this uh, for, um, for painting. And this is my, that's my tabaret. And um, then, then you can see my palette. And I'll just share with you. This is, um, this is my palette. Um, kind of looks like a mess, right? No, it's not a mess. But yeah, and this is watercolor, the medium and watercolor. And you'll see that these are my tools. Uh, you'll see my tools uh, spread around. And as we go through the studio, you'll see other other tools as well as research. So, okay. So, 
I'm going to swivel around and share with you. This is my library. One of the bookcases um, that I have. In this case, these are all um, artists. There's uh, Diego Rivera. Um, there's all kinds of artists there that I'd like that are important to me and I use for inspiration. Um, so my library is there. This library is not so much research, but interest and uh, inspiration. And then you'll see these are drawings that I've done. Um, that is actually that charcoal drawing there. Uh, the, actually, it's red chalk. Uh, was done when I was teaching at the University of Delaware. So you'll see on the wall uh, things that I've done, that I've illustrated. And I'm going to walk you through. So you'll see I love plants. Love, love, love plants. And that's my work table that I shared with you. And that work table is backed by another work table, drawing table. And this table is where I do most of the drawing or I transfer my work by a light box. And when I get a chance to visit the school, I'll share that uh, with you more. Um, what you'll see also in the studio is that I love to collect things all kinds of things. And I work alone here in my studio. And I find that I need <clears throat> to be actually around things that I like. So that's where you see the plants. You'll Jerry, see can I ask a question that had come up? Why yeah. are those slanted versus flat when you're drawing? Oh, oh, that's, a, that's, that's because... I think you can see me. Um, can you see me all right? Yeah, we can see your back and the board now, yes. Okay, so I work on, on an angle. Now, this is interesting because a lot of artists might work on an angle, but when you're painting with watercolor, um, it's, uh, it's also, it can only be angled so much or the watercolor would run. But uh, it's a comfortable position for me to draw in. You know, and that's, you know, interesting enough. I, I saw a video of an artist the other day, and they work flat. You know, I, I tend to need a sort of an angle. And I have, you'll see, I have also different working stations. So that's why the drawing board is angled. I love music. Again, uh, the music fills the space for me. I also sometimes... When I'm doing like, if I'm doing like a, a, a book on the West, I might listen to Western music. So here's another image. Um, as you'll see that, um, you know, my work covers a broad span of subject matter. And, um, and, and here, this is a, an illustration that celebrates um, Latin America. And this is the uh, Puerto Rican Day Parade. And here you'll see a uh, desk that I often uh, spend time writing in. There's my, my exercising bike, um, which I, I, I need to get back on. Once I, once I leave this presentation, I'm going to exercise. Anyway, so that, another bookshelf. And that is, uh, you know, I, I separate um the shelves in terms of subject. That bookshelf is all nature. That's all about um, nature, animal life, wildlife, uh, floral life, um, that even space. Um, this outdoor room, you'll see out, um, room that is out of my main working space also is aligned with bookshelves. And those um, sh uh, books, are you mainly uh, other artists that I um, that I love and and I find um, as inspiration? This is a work table as well, and here's where I keep my um, books um, reference for a particular project. Now, this um, project, these book series of books here, and these folders um, are. Um, 
are uh, it's a, a memoir. So this is um, and it's it's it, it's on the fifties, forties, um, and fifties uh, American history and culture. Uh, a lot of this with these books are black culture um, because I grew up in an all black uh, uh, neighborhood or street. And um, here's something I'm, I meant to talk about. You'll hear me talk about learning to write as for the first time. And not the first time, it's not. But to, to take writing on uh, seriously and as a project. This is eight years of writing. I work in longhand. Let's see if I can find here. I write in longhand, and I write on legal pads, and then I work with someone uh, to um, give shape and form to them. So I d sort of dictate in some well, my what I write, and someone types it out for me. That's a way that I've gotten over the hurdle of my spelling and also sometimes uh, composition. Um, and um, here is a project that I'm working on with the poet. So my work um, is two things. It's, it's, it's a collaboration with other artists and it's also um, uh, the works that I create myself that I write. So I, I write and I, and I illustrate. Um, this project is um, called uh, A Walk in the Woods, and it's um, based on, really inspired by stories and encounters that I've had with wildlife in, in the neighborhood here. So these books here are all about nature. Um, however, I would say that this book project also was about, you know, as I said, my encounters. So they're, they're real experiences I've had um, uh, with, with wildlife. So uh, you'll see, I keep everything, by the way, this is interesting. Um, I realized that um, as a person who has a learning disability, that organization is key. So, um, so everything I do, as you notice, is organized. Remember the library is organized. Uh, this 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 um, series of books for one project is one one space. Uh, another project there's another space. Uh, everything is very organized. Um, now, now with all that organizing and all that, I'm going to share with you um, some portraits. These portraits are done in pastel. And um, uh, this one is my daughter. Um, these are done through taking a photograph and then having the the uh, my daughter sit and you you know for me. And um, these are again pastels. Most of my work is pencil and watercolor and paper. However, um, as an artist, I need to experiment and try new things. And in this case, it's it's pastel. Um, and I'll just flip through these. It's a series of portraits I've done. Ups, upside down, that doesn't work. I experiment a lot, but not, I don't ever work upside down. <laughs> This is a uh, self-portrait. Um, someone took a picture of me, of course. And then I rather, so then after that, uh, I put the picture aside and I work by looking into a mirror. Um, so, and this is my wife. You guys won't tell her that, that you saw her upside down, right? <laughs> And again, these are pastels. Now, pastels are like they're chalk. They're colored chalk, and um, it's a completely different 
um, uh, process and, and how the manner in which you you work this medium. Watercolor, you use um, a brush, uh, and of course, with uh, pastels, uh, it's a, um, uh, you have a chalk, a uh, stick of chalk in your hand. So again, um, I, I mentioned that this is all, this particular library here, that's all American history. And I tend to like books. I, I tend to like books as opposed to just going to Google because a book, you can get more information. In other words, you, you, you in, in your search to find what you're looking for, you can discover something that you hadn't planned on. Okay. So we're back at my drawing board and we're gonna go into those process drawings. Um, Mr. Yes. So these are what you call on, on the left there, uh, thumbnail sketches. And I do those uh, first and um, uh, they're just sort of very quick and a direct way to um, explore possibilities for what passages of the text you, you might, th you're thinking of illustrating. That's change and, and the fact that they're small <clears throat> and they're done very quickly allows you to rethink things. So I'm always actually always rethinking. And on, on your uh, right there, that's what you call a working drawing. So the bottom left, you'll see, a t and these things are, these drawings are, well, they're like two inches, three inches. You know, you can see that's a, this is eight and a half by 11. So you can see how many um, uh, thumbnails I might do. And um, for a, a given project or page, passage, um, and then this is a working drawing. So that's the scale. Talked about this in the last uh, in the last presentation is that um, when I was a kid, I didn't really understand importance of math, uh, especially if I wanted the desire to be, become an artist. But everything has to be scaled. Um, you have to understand math for everything. So can consider all of that. These are marker drawings. And then uh, Mr. Cohen, the next slide, please. Uh, this is what you call the final art, unlike the work over there uh, that I shared with the portraits we were done in pastels. Uh, these are done in watercolor, which is my signature medium, um, pencil, watercolor, and paper. Next line. Again, you'll see on the left um, the um, uh, working drawing, and on the right, uh, you'll see the finished art. I mean, applying the watercolor over a drawing. Um, Mr. Cohen, how are we doing as far as time? I, don't... I think we're about um, 10 more minutes if you wanted to talk about the most important thing, the advice you had, which leads into the next bunch of drawings. Well, I mean, I think that, um, I, again, uh, the advice I have for budding artists. How many budding artists, by the way? Okay. Raise your hand. <laughs> Raise your hand. Um, is the sketchbook. And um, well, here's my sketchbook. And I talked about this. This almost goes like right full circle, right? Remember, I talked about the newspaper stand and the fact that what did I have with me? Sketchbook. And this is a sketchbook that led to, by the way, I didn't know this in the very beginning, led to this project with Nikki Grimes, uh, A Walk in the Woods. These are all from this sketchbook, and I'll just here it is, um, and you can see it on the screen, of course. And it's all the wildlife that I've encountered um, in my many, many years here um, in Croton on the Hudson. Um, and these are animals that I see and, and I've seen. Um, by the way, the fox, the red fox, um, for some reason in the last, with the last year, I've seen fox before, maybe sighting, maybe two sightings or over the years. But of late, I've been seeing one and it's it, it sort of has, it's like a, tr um, a trail, I guess, um, uh, that runs right by my studio. So I'm, I'm sitting on my studio deck or looking out the window, I would see a red fox. Uh, and then the raccoons, of course. Uh, let's see what else we have there. Uh, there's the, the, the um, of course, the deer, the white-tailed deer. 
and um, and you know, I think we've all encountered white-tailed deer uh, at some at some point around this Westchester area because there's so many so so much in the way of green space. And then I I had this idea about something I loved again love nature, and I was thinking about nature in terms of what things you can see, but all those and also what you can hear, especially at night. Hey, guess what I found out? Some this is very interesting. Do you realize that there are, there is the forest or the woods are really more animated at night than in the day? Um, uh, there's a lot of animals that come out at night that are nocturnal. And as a matter of fact, if you go for a walk in the woods, this is what I discovered. Um, it's rare that you spot animals, birds, maybe um, squirrels, yes. But most animals go into hiding during the day, especially if they hear something, they're alert to sounds. But at night, is that is when you find that chorus of sounds, and that's a tree frog. And then the next slide and the last one, of course, is the hoot owl. And I just love that sound, the hoot, hoot, hoot. Um, and that's what came to me. But this is what the beauty of what I do is that you're constantly learning. You're constantly learning and understanding things. So in that project, um, it was about knowing more about the woods in, in this area. So the sketchbook, if you guys love drawing, even if you don't love drawing, but you like making notations, jotting down things, get yourself a sketchbook. Let yourself flow into maybe not only writing about something, but also drawing, you know? Um, so anyway, think about all that stuff. Um, One of the things that came up was, I heard that you worked with Laura Bush. How was that like? Um, it was fabulous. First of all, she's a terrific um, lady um, and, um, and a quick, quick thinker. I worked with um, Mrs. Bush on, um, on two projects. Uh, the one was the um, a booklet for um, the uh, White House Christmas celebrations, and um, so I worked with her with her on that, and I also worked with her on a um, a poster for the National Book Festival. I had an opportunity to visit um, the White House on a number of occasions. Um, and then actually she was instrumental in getting me appointed to the National Council of the Arts. And that's a funding agency for, uh, for, for the arts in, in this country. Um, so I, I am proud to say, I, I, I mean, in a given year, I would be in the, in the White House maybe three or four times. Um, and, um, you know, I've also, um, and that's the, you know, I talked about my, my work being rewarding at times. And certainly that was pretty, pretty special. Um, yeah, so she was great. And we still correspond with one another. They wanted to know, did you meet the president? I did. I spent, um, um, we were invited uh, by President um, Bush to, um, President George Bush, to, uh, he wanted to congratulate um, a committee I was on, on the National Council of the Arts so that um, he invited us to the Oval Office uh, to thank us for the work that we had, had done. So yes, I, I did, um, I, I met the president, yes. Jerry, is there anything else you wanna do? You wanna go to some of the chat? Yeah, that's fine, let's do that. All right, um, so I know you shared in that getting to know you about um, the two brothers and three sisters. They wanted to know where in the family, oldest, youngest. Oh, oh, I'm, I'm, the, I, I'm the middle child. I was the middle child. So I had uh, two older brothers and an older sister. And then it was Jerry. And then I had two younger sisters. And we were all about, um, about three years apart. Yeah. I, by the way, I mean, it was cool having um, some older brothers that were that, you know, that took care of me. Yeah. So and we lived in this little tiny house uh, in, um, in the Germantown section of Philadelphia. This house, I'll tell you how small this house was. 
it was it was it was six rooms we had one bathroom without a sink it was a really kind of tiny house and i still go back because there's uh, there um uh it's the old neighborhood uh, I, I left uh, philadelphia when i was about 20 and i moved up to boston and that's where i got my first job um at a uh, Rustcraft greeting card company and then i moved to new york this area in 1970 and i fell in love with it um our kids well, i have four children and they all went to uh district three schools and um and they loved it so we were very pleased and i, I love the fact that i'm surrounded by a lot of green space there's audubon and whatnot and i walk in the woods quite a bit so it's um, um yeah i love it here and about sports, you had shared that you, the Dobbins Vocational Technical School gym team. Yeah, well, I was, <laughs> I was in terrific. I mean, I was pretty fast, by the way, but I didn't go out for the track team. I, however, I did go out for the gym team, and I did get a letter. That was important. What's so, a gym team? What do you do in, in that? Well, you do, um, you know, like the Olympics. You see, well. I, maybe that's not a good example. <laughs> uh, Jim, you do things on the rings and the ropes and the mats. That was that was it. That was it. You tumbled and um, that kind of thing. <laughs> you know, like in the Olympics, but except that um, I, I wasn't that good. <laughs> a question is, what do you think your best piece of art is and kind of connect it? How long does a drawing take? Um, I very fortunate that i mean there are certain uh, images I, I shared one let's see if i can find it um that i really love and that's the cover of the book john henry and i'm gonna tell you something which is my work is is in publishing right in books but there are times when i've done an image i'm trying to look for it it's always on the bottom right always on the bottom this is image here now, this is special. It was always special to me. But it's super special because the Philadelphia Museum of Art bought this piece for their permanent collection. So it's not always hanging because it's watercolor and watercolor is sensitive to light. But there are times when they have special exhibitions where you could go to the museum and see my work. So that's that was that. So this is a very special piece, but I have a lot of very special uh, pieces because it's also not only the piece itself coming out the way you want it to come out, but it's the experience of creating the art. Sometimes it's the model. It's sometimes it's what you know, what you learn um, um, while you're while you're making the art. So that's all also very important. Yes. The oldest painting, um, I know you talked about the closet, you had a 1960 in there. Is there anything else you'd like to speak to? And then the first book yeah. you wrote. Well, the first book um, was called The Adventures of Spider. Uh, and it was a chapter book. And these are Anansi stories are from um, West Africa. Now, here's something kind of... <laughs> so that book was published in 1964. It's still in print. I mean, you can still order that book, and that's kind of sort of special. So I've been doing this for, well, close to 60 years. Um, but this goes right back to that question, um, that uh, or not a question, but the, the sort of takeaway. And that was um, about how much I love what I do. And, um, and part of it is the fact that my work reach, reaches people in, in, in a way and touches people, and that's very rewarding. Interesting question. Uh, do you think drawing helped you become a better author? Uh, yeah, as a matter of fact, this is interesting about the writing piece that I shared with you in my, my memoir, and um, and the last text that I wrote was um, for, the, for uh, the Little Mermaid. Um, and I will, I will sometimes draw something out that I plan to write uh, because it's a way of me getting over that bridge or that hurdle. 
uh, I'm, I guess in a sense, I'm a visual person. So I, I think visually. So um, oftentimes I'll draw, like some of these drawings that you see on the back, take the, my drawing board. Uh, these are gonna be text. I mean, in other words, I'm gonna write the words, um, uh, but I need to do this first. And sometimes I will use some of this art, but it's also a way of, um, uh, of getting me over the hurdle of um, uh, sometimes the fear of writing, you know, um, all those kind of things. So I draw it out and I feel comfortable with the idea and then I write the text. I write the text. So but that's the whole thing that you got to find your way of doing something. And all of us have our own unique way of doing things. And that's what you have to sort of trust as long as in that, 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 that that space that you're learning and you're growing and you're also re, um, um, filling a responsibilities because all of my work is about a responsibility. I work with publishers, an art director and a publisher, but it's a responsibility that I work also hard. Uh, and that's, that's kind of um, what you want to think about. I love what I do. I uh, fulfill responsibilities. All that goes into the the, the, the work. And, and the, the other piece is I talked about what are the things that are essential, you know, and I uh, what I want to leave you with. And one is certainly carry, you know, a journal or a sketchbook. The other thing is be always open to new ideas. Be curious. Want to know about what you don't know. Want to know about what you don't know. And I think that's important. Um, question, how long does writing a whole book take? I know you talked about the memoirs, eight years, maybe the other end, has uh, there been a low amount of time? It, it, um, when I was writing the text for The Little Mermaid, and, and you guys get that book, and you'll see it's, it's, it's lengthy as far as text. I think it took me maybe about four months to write it. Um, and that, you know, I work with an editor and all that. So to get what you call a finished text, you can see it's it's for um, for a picture book. There is it's it's substantial in terms of text, um, but I would say three to four months. But I'm always doing other things as well. So um, you know, say in that three or four months, I'd be working on sketches as well. So, and here's the other thing is, and and in the beginning, I always had to have a deadline. Uh, that I had to meet. Now and I, I tend to, um, as I've been doing it for so long, I let things uh, take whatever amount of time it takes. Um, uh, sticking with sketches, somebody asked, do your sketches go into your book sometimes? Do you throw them away or go back and revisit ones? I keep all everything I do. Don't throw anything away because you learn from... Uh, those things that you feel are not working as well as what is working. Um, now, that's an interesting question because uh, the new book that I've um, I'm, I'm, I will be out, it's in production now. So next, sometime this year, the end of fall, the, th the th thumbnail drawings that I shared with you, those small drawings, they're going to be actually used in the book for the in papers. In other words, you open the book, and you're going to see all those um, those thumbnail sketches, um, and then you'll get into the the, the heart of the book, um, which will be the watercolors and 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 the text, the story itself. And by the way, I'm collaborating this time on that book. It's called uh, The Welcome Chair by an author that you guys might know, Rosemary Wells. Uh, she wrote the book, and I'm I'm illustrating it. Now that question is really super special because it's the first time where I will use the actual thumbnail sketches in the book. Great question, man. A couple of Jacksons I'm gonna to put together. Did you ever have trouble getting a book published? Did you ever wanna quit doing art? And have you ever worked with a big company? Oh, wow. Um, wait a minute, the first question was, was have you ever had a book uh, trouble getting a book published? Okay. Now, fortunately, as an illustrator, 
um, the book, uh, a, a text or a story is sold to a publisher and then the publisher comes to me and to find out if I'm interested. If I'm interested and I take on that project. So um, now the memoir is a whole nother story. It's taken eight years and this is my second publisher because the first publisher, well, they weren't sure I could do it. This is very interesting. That's a great story. The first publisher I was with felt that I was not the writer that they had hoped for. Maybe I wasn't at that time. So they wanted to bring in another writer to write it for me. And I said, no. I wanted and I believed that I could write it myself and I wanted to write it myself. So I took it to another publisher. Um, by the way, I'm still struggling with that because they keep digging. They ask, keep asking more and more out of me. However, the more they ask, the better writer I become. So, okay. Now, the second question was part of that. You never want to stop or quit doing art. No, never, never. There are times and there are pockets where it seems as if I have an empty tank that I don't have the ideas um, for a given project. But, um, and now whether they were, no, I don't think I ever thought about um, giving it up. I mean, there were times when I seems like the struggle was bigger than I could than I could climb or clear. Um, now, as as someone who has been doing it for sixty odd years, I realize there are times within a project where you don't know where to go, and at times like that, I leave it and I come back to it. And I know that it might need some space, um, but never, never, never giving it up. Uh, it's just too important to me. And also, the bigger the challenge, the bigger the reward. There is nothing like starting out with something or someone telling you can't do it and you do it. And sometimes that person who's saying you can't do it may be yourself. But when you stick to it, and sometimes I do a lot of sticking. Um, it's incredibly rewarding. Was and there? the last part was about working with a big company. Oh, well, I work for, um, earlier on, I've worked for lar most of the larger corporations. Now, my publishers uh, have two publishers, three publishers, um, uh, Little Brown and Company, which is fairly, that's, um, uh, Cachette, which is a um, um, an, a uh, a foreign company, and they're they're huge. But I also work with um, Dial Books. And Dial Books is part of Penguin uh, Random House. They're huge. They're huge. So most of the publishers I work with um, are called mainstream publishers. They're pretty big, Macmillan and all that. Um, but yes, so, so the publishing companies are qu quite quite large. All right, we have two final questions, um, and then I'll help wrap it up with you. One is, are your drawings eco-friendly? So I think the materials that you use. <laughs> That's really great. That's beautiful. I think so. Um, most of my uh, material is watercolor. Um, so, yeah, eco-friendly. And I work on paper. And how? guess what else? The paper isn't even recycled because I keep it all. <laughs> so, um uh, yeah, so it's now that's a good question because I think we all should be asking. Uh, yeah, that was Shelby. And yeah. finally, when do you want to put the pencil down and retire? <laughs> oh, I'm never going to retire. Um, uh, I, I don't, I mean, it gives me, we go back to the, I love what I do. So it gives me, gives me joy. It's hard work, but it gives me joy. Um, so why would you give up something that, um, that gives you joy? Not only that, why would I give up something where I can't reach out and touch you guys? I mean, the beauty of that, of what I do is it's, 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 you guys take it in, you know, I'm, um, and, and I get a chance to talk with you. I mean, Ed, what more can you ask? Um, 
It, it, it provides me joy. Hopefully it provides you joy. Uh, it's a way of making a living. And then I have a lot of people who are interested in, in, in my work. Um, so it shows in museums. I'm actually working on two exhibitions now. So, so that's good. Well, well, thank you so much. You know, I, and I do know that some of our students here are artists. They have their own sketch pads and I appreciate your willingness to receive it. You know, they're gonna work on something. Yeah, um, I, and we'll share it with you. I would love that. I would love that. So you guys, you remember those four takeaways? I'm not gonna ask you, but, uh, but think about it. But that's, that's important. And not only that, those four takeaways are going to help you through the rest of the school day. Keep in mind, it's not that I'm talking to you as an artist, but you can apply those things to anything that you want to be. And that's something to work for. And that's why school is in place. All right? Okay, guys. Have well, a great you. day. Give a hand hug wave and thank you to Mr. Pinckney. Okay, guys, take care. Thank you very much. All right, you're Thank welcome. Thank you. This was great. Thank you Thank so much. You.